today is a little different. Normally at Ovation Church, I will speak in series, and I like to look at a topic or, or a set of topics that relate to each other and, uh, and expound on those over three, four, or five weeks or so. Um, but every once in a while, we'll put in a single message, and that's what today is, just a one-off message. And so I believe it's going to be helpful to you. Man, this message really spoke a lot into my life, and, and so I believe it's going to be uh, beneficial in your life also. Now, all of us in here um, are complex, but I know some of you in here have spouses. Maybe you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and maybe you're sitting with them. And and if I were to ask which one of you is complex, then I would imagine most of the guys are going to look over at their uh, girlfriend or their wife, or some of you are like this right now. Um, and it's true that, you know, guys pretty much have like a single focus and you put TV in front of them, everything melts away and, and they're deaf to their spouse's voice and, and uh, you give them a remote control, then, you know, they can't think of anything else except change, 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 change every like five seconds. And so we are, seem to be very simple. Uh, women, on the other hand, have like gauges and knobs and buttons and cranks you have to pull and try and figure out this combination. And what are you thinking? How do you feel? And they're like upset and mad and short with you. I'm fine. You know that that's not the truth. It's not that. There's much more deeper than that. And so, so you know, guys, it's like, what are you thinking? Nothing. It's true, okay? <laughs> there is nothing going. It's like a blank wall, okay? And, and so, guys, it seems like we're simple. But the, the truth is, is that we are actually all very complex. In fact, it says in Psalm 139 verse 14, this is David, and he says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. And if you haven't figured it out yet, then I'm sure this message will help clarify this for you. Life is full of complexities. In fact, you are full of complexities. Now, some people could see a, 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 a sliver of who you are and think they got you figured out. You know, and you're one person at work, and those people in that sphere knows you as work, coworker, employer, or employee, and then you're home, and they know you as dad or as spouse, or they know you as mom, or they know you as brother or sister, and so there's all these slivers and aspects of life, but no one truly sees all of you except for God, of course. And you, if you're actually honest with yourself, but most of us aren't. Most of us like to highlight the things we like about ourselves, minimize the things that we don't like about ourselves, and we don't really even in our own mind have a complete picture of who we really are because it gets distorted, gets twisted. But life is full of complexities. You are full of complexities. And in order for me, in order for you to actually develop into who God wants us to be, in order for us to uh, have what God intends for us to have in life, we can't just deal with a sliver of life. We have to deal with life as a whole. We have to deal with every dimension and every aspects of ourselves and of our lives. And so our identity and who we are, the more we realize that and understand that and embrace it for the reality that it is, then the more equipped we are to take a step from there to where God wants us to be. And so we really have to have this accurate picture of who we are and deal with every dimension of our lives if we're going to fulfill God's purpose in our lives. In fact, it says in Ecclesiastes 7, 18, I love it in the message translation, it says, it's best to stay in touch with both sides of an issue. Listen to what it says. A person who fears God deals responsibly with all of reality, not just a piece of it. So if you want to live a life that honors God, if you want to live a life that embraces everything God has for you, you're going to have to deal with all of reality, not just a sliver of it. You're going to have to look at every aspect and every dimension of your life in its totality and say, God, I'm going to honor you in all of these. God, I'm going to pursue you in all of these. You can't just pick and choose and say, well, I'll go to church on Sunday and live a different way on Tuesday. I'm going I'm to read the Bible over here in the morning and check it off my list, and then I'm going to go to work and do this. No, we've got to say all of life, in totality of everything, and who I am, I'm going to honor God. You know, think about the uh, parable of the talents. 
You're probably familiar with this parable. Uh, Master comes and gives one five, gives another one two, and gives one one. Tells them to take what I've given you and go make the most of it. And you're familiar with the story that, that what happens and two of them double it and one of them buries it and just returns what they were given. And the master praises the ones that increased and grew and doubled it and then says, you wicked, lazy servant for the one that didn't do anything with it. And what we can learn from that parable is a couple of things. One of the things that we can learn is none of us are the same. Okay, all of us have been given something different in life. And you can't compare your life to someone else when God's given them something that he hasn't given you. And somebody might have something to excel in one area, and you're not called to excel in their area. You're called to excel in your area. And so in life, God has dealt us things in life. Life has dealt us things, and, and you cannot accurately compare yourself to, one, to another. It's not apples to apples. You have to recognize yours. We can also learn in that parable that what we have been given in life, God expects us to do the best with it that we can. God expects us to take everything life throws at us, everything that's been dealt to us in life, God expects us to take that hand and win with it. That's what we can learn from that. And so I've got some cards here. I believe you were each given a card, and I just wanted to give you that to remember it. You don't have to like pair up with five people and see who you can beat or anything like that. But uh, I wanted to talk to you about this um, because I was thinking of, of poker, like any good pastor. Who in here plays some poker? Good, we got some sinners in here. So at the end of service, <laughs> gonna do an altar call, man. It's gonna be, um, it, it, so here's the thing: is um, maybe I shouldn't tell you all this. No, it's church. I can be. I'll open up and be honest. If you promise to. See, a couple weeks ago, our kids wanted to play some games, and so we pull out the cards, and we pull out some chips, and we, we pull out some pennies, and quarters, and nickels, and, and the kids are all the uh, kids, uh, Cole and Addison, eight and seven, and I'm teaching them poker, and now, now, see, I'm a pastor, so we did Bible study before, <laughs> and after. So we're sitting there and we're playing and I'm teaching them seven card draw and then I'm teaching them five card draw and then I say, okay, now I'm going to teach you a man's game of poker, five card stud. And so I, I, I deal it out and I explain to them, now you can't exchange any of these cards, you, you have to play the hand you're dealt. You know what Colin Addison did, what most of us do in life? That's not fair. I don't like that. I want different cards. And so we respond in life like that. And so that's the metaphor for life um, is you've seen the movie and it was wrong. Life is not like a box of chocolates. Life is like five card stud. Okay? Because in life, we are dealt this hand in life. But God expects us to take the hand we're dealt and do the best with it that we can. And there's some aspects in life, there are some factors in life that you didn't choose, you didn't want, you didn't decide for these things in your life, but they're there and they're real and you have to deal with them and you have to face them. You can't just switch out your cards, say, I want someone else's hand, I want, I want what they've got. No, you've got your own hand to play. And I believe that even with the obstacles, even with the challenges in life that we've been dealt, that if we rely on God, we can win with the hand we were dealt. We don't have to suffer the consequences of it and have a horrible life or a destructive life or a bad life or a bad marriage or bad relationships just because of the hand we were dealt. We can overcome those things in our lives. Now I want to talk about a couple aspects of life that we've been dealt that really determine and affect our identity. How we see ourselves, how we think about ourselves, what we believe about ourselves, and ultimately then how we live, how we behave, what we do in life. So let's go over a couple of these aspects. Before I do that, this is what I want to mention, is that the hand that you've been dealt in life we know a couple of things, I'll, I'll, two things about life in general. Is that one, number one thing that we know about life is that every aspect of life has been marred by sin. 
Everything that we experience in this world has been marred by sin. Whether, you know, God didn't intend tornadoes to kill people and destroy property. God didn't intend for this earth to crack apart and shift and have earthquakes. God didn't create the world to function that way. Sin brought death. Sin brought destruction. And in your life and in my life, we are affected by the results of sin in this world. So every aspect of our life have been affected and marred by sin. We know that. We also know, number two, that Jesus came to save us from sin, to redeem us from sin, to rescue us from sin, to buy us back and to purchase us back from sin. And the salvation that Jesus offers is not just salvation from hell, not just salvation from sin, not just a ticket to heaven, but it's also salvation from ourselves and the identity that we have of ourselves and the way that we look at the cards that we've got. So Jesus has come to deal with the mar of sin and the stain or scar of sin in this world that we live in. We know that. And so if we talk about these cards... These cards have been affected and marred by sin in your life. What you've been dealt in life has been marred and affected by sin, and we need a Savior to redeem us from those effects. We need a Savior to overcome that sin that's affected us. And so that's what we're going to look at. So let's talk about a couple of aspects of life, some of the the factors that we've been dealt in life and how they affect us. And we'll go through these and then talk about some of them. Real quickly. Number one, if you're taking notes, this is what I want to talk about, chemistry. One of the cards that you've been dealt is your chemistry. What I mean by that is your biological makeup in life. And this is something you didn't choose. You did not choose to have the color of eyes you have. You did not choose to be tall when you wanted to be shorter. You didn't, who would want that anyway, right? I mean, sure, you walk into a suit store and like the pants end about here and you're like, oh man. But, but here's the thing is that you didn't choose to be athletical. You didn't choose to be um, uh, athletical. <laughs> See, one of, one of the cards I was dealt was an overactive imagination. I just make up my own words. It's just... You didn't choose to be athletic. You didn't choose to, to excel in um, academics and what you, you want to play football. You, know, you, you didn't choose those things. That's, that's chemistry. You know, in fact, what happens in your body with your chemistry, everything that happens in your body is a chemical reaction. You know, when you fall in love, it's endorphins, it's other chemicals, it's a, it's a swirling thing going on in your body, the neurons are shooting off, it's this chemical reaction in your body. You eat food that tastes good, your tongue doesn't know if it tastes good. Those are chemical reactions in your body. The things that you are drawn to in life oftentimes are these chemical reactions in life. And so those things you did not choose in your life. That's the makeup of your DNA and your chemicals and your balance in your body. And now, like I said, everything in life has been marred by sin. And a lot of us have chemical imbalances. Look at who's sitting next to you. It's scary. You know, if you're low on calcium, you're going to have brittle bones. You, you can wish to not have brittle bones. You can hope that your bones are strong. But if you're low on calcium, you've got weak bones. You know, if, you are, if your thyroid is off, if you've got problems with your thyroid, then you know what? You're going to always be tired. doesn't matter. You're not going to have energy. You can work out. You can eat right. Thyroid problem? You're going to be tired. And so our bodies and uh, the chemistry of who we are affects us. And you did not choose your chemical makeup. You did not choose your chemistry. That's a card you've been dealt. What is it in life that you've been dealing with, struggling with? Maybe you just need to take a supplement. Maybe you need to say, okay, this is a chemical makeup of who I am, the chemistry of what I've been dealt in life. What am I going to do? Now, the thing is, though, is oftentimes we see those chemical imbalances. We see that chemistry, and we often turn to shame because of it. 
We often feel inferior when we compare ourselves to other people. You know, we would say, I'm not very athletic. I don't have a, you know, this muscle structure that those people have. And so something's wrong with me. You know, that person, they have great vision and I wear glasses. So something's wrong with me. You know, those people, they can hear those tones and I can't. And in a conversation setting, they're talking and I don't really understand. And something's wrong with me. And really, it's just this chemistry that in your body, you were dealt. You know, some of us have this threshold for pain. Some of you are very sensitive to pain. And like if a shirt is rubbing you wrong, it irritates you and you can't stand it. And you won't wear that shirt because of that one collar that touches you right here. You got this over sensitivity to pain. Some of us, man, we have a high threshold of pain. You'll like lose your toe and not know it until the end of the day. And you're like, where's my toe? And here's the thing is with your chemistry, there's nothing shameful, nothing sinful about it. It's just, you're different. You're unique. It's the way you are. You don't have to then feel bad about it, compare yourselves to other, think less of yourself because of that. That's a card you're dealt in life. One of the other things that we can talk about one card you're dealt with chemistry, another card is your connections. Your connections in life. Think about this, the relationships you have, the connections in your life, some of them were dealt to you that you didn't choose. You didn't choose who your parents are. You didn't choose who your siblings are. You know, you're, you work somewhere, you like your boss, they fire that boss, hire a new boss, they transfer a boss, now you get a new boss. You didn't choose that. These connections in life oftentimes are dealt to us. Here's the thing is that your relationships and your connections in life, they affect so much about how you think and feel about yourself. In fact, the the people that are closest to you, they impact what you think about you. You think about yourself as a result of how you think the people close to you think about you. That was deep, okay? Okay, you think about yourself as a response to how you think the people close to you think about you. Those people close to you may not even think that about you, but if you think they think it about you, you think it about yourself. Exactly. Your wives will explain it to you later. It was too complex, okay? I know. But your relationships, here's the thing is that that Jesus even said the most vital, the most important thing we can do in life is to love God and love people. It's about relationships and it's about connections. Bible tells us to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. The Bible stresses this idea that your connections, your relationships in life determine a lot about who you are and your future and how you see yourself and how you live life. And if you're going to embrace what God intends for you in your life, you have to look at the hand you are dealt with your connections, who you're connected to in life. You know, here's the thing is sin separates those connections. Sin in our lives separates us from intimacy with people, separates us from intimacy with God. You know, all the way back in Genesis, we know the story of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were uh, very intimate, relationally, physically, mentally. They were on the same page. And then sin entered. And sin not only separated them from God, but sin separated them from each other. And because of sin, what do they do? They go and they get leaves and they cover themselves. And we still do that today because of sin, because of guilt, because of shame. We cover ourselves and say, I will never let anyone know that part of me. I will never expose this area of my life to anyone. I don't want the ridicule. I don't want the judgment. I don't want them to look at me the way I look at myself. And I'm going to hide this from everyone. And sin separates us from God, and sin separates us from the relationships that God would have in our lives.
third hand, third deck, third card that we're dealt in life are circumstances. You know, some of you, some of us in here have gone through circumstances, situations in life, and you didn't choose them. They were forced on you. You didn't put yourself in that situation. Someone else did. But yet you suffer the consequences of their sin. And because of their sin, you feel less of a person because of their sin, because of what they've done to you, because of what was brought upon you without your choice. There's shame, there's guilt, there's regret. And all of those past experiences are affecting you now or affecting the way you see life. And because of those circumstances of the past, you've now chosen and decided, I'm never going to trust anyone again. You've decided, maybe you, you, you had a job when you were young and a manager said, you'll never be management. You're never going to, don't even apply for that position. It's never going to happen. And now 15 years later, you question and wonder if you should even apply for that job. You question and wonder, should I even do that? Why? Because of a circumstance that was forced on you, because of a circumstance that you were in is now affected your identity and who you are. Those circumstances affect us. It is a hand you were dealt. You wish it would be different, but the reality is, is that it did happen to you. Maybe you were abused as a child, maybe as a teenager, maybe even as a young adult, maybe even now in a relationship where someone doesn't treat you with respect. Some of us have experienced circumstances that we didn't want, that we didn't choose. But we have to deal with them. Is a hand you were dealt. Is a card that you're holding in your hand. Fourth card that we've been given is our consciousness. See, we have conversations with ourselves. See, we are created different than uh, animals and everything. We're, we're, we're special because we have this self-awareness where we talk to ourselves all the time. Maybe, I, I talk to myself all the time. In fact, I was at Six Flags one time, I was younger, and this, these people in front of me were annoying me a little bit in line of one of the rides, and so I was standing a little bit extra close to them, you know, like, like there's that space buffer zone that should be there, and it wasn't. It was kind of like European nation, I was like right up against them, okay? And so I'm right up against them, and I'm staring at them. Just... <laughs> and so, I mean, they see me, and they're like, like they're trying to ignore me. And they look and they're like, what? I say, are the voices, voices in my head bothering you? <laughs> and so, see, line jumping is not permitted. Doesn't say anything about scaring the people in front of you <laughs> to leave, okay? We have these conversations with us all the time. And that's what I mean by our consciousness. It's this awareness of ourselves where our mind talks to our heart, where our heart talks to our mind. And, and you know, this happens all day long where maybe you want to lose weight and you're thinking, uh, you, you have this conversation or this fight or this battle with yourself. I should eat broccoli, but I want ice cream. I want a bowl of ice cream. One bowl of ice cream won't hurt. And then we start lying to ourselves. Well, if I have a bowl of ice cream tonight, I'll walk in the morning and it will be okay. And so we, we, we like try to reason and, and we think these thoughts and, and, and then we start thinking, like, man, I, I'm not pretty enough, or I'm not strong enough, or I'm not smart enough. And, and we have all these thoughts and these conversations with ourselves, and we talk ourselves of, out of opportunity. We talk ourselves out of close relationships. We talk ourselves into thinking the wrong things about us. And, and these thoughts in our heart, our consciousness, and our awareness of who we are is this hand that we're all dealing with, this factor in life that affects our identity and what we think and how we feel. But there's a fourth, fifth card that we've been dealt. And the fifth card is choices. And this fifth card is a wild card. You know, we were created in the image of God. That we are not like a dog that has instincts but can't choose right or wrong. We're not, you know, an elephant has no moral compass in life. But we're different. 
We are created in the likeness and in the image of God. And you and I have a moral compass and a consciousness where we can choose to do what's right even when we feel like doing what's wrong. We can choose how to respond to a circumstance or a situation. See, this, this wild card can take the rest of these cards and change them. This wild card can trump anything that you've been dealt in life. We can choose to overcome the hardships that we've been dealt. We can choose to learn the skills to overcome these and not just cope with them, but have victory over them. We don't have to suffer the consequences of the things that you can't control. See, here's the thing is that with this power of choice that we have, with this freedom to choose to be different, we can take something like our chemistry and we can say that even though my chemistry is bent me towards this way, I'm going to choose to be healthy. And I'm going to choose, I know that if I consume these products or eat these things or live my life this way with these health choices, then I feel tired, I feel grumpy, uh, I'm moody, I'm, uh, you know, I'm whatever. And so we can say, I'm going to choose to overcome that. And everybody else might be able to eat those things, but I'm not because I know how it affects me. And so I choose to overcome that and live healthy this way. We can choose to overcome those limitations. We can choose to overcome the, the mar and the effect of sin that was in our life. You know, I, I think about relationships. Some of the relationships you have in life, you didn't choose. You, you, you didn't want to be in that family or to have that crazy uncle or, you know, whatever it may be. You didn't choose those things. In fact, some of you have divorces and it wasn't your choice. You would have rather stayed married, but didn't work that way. You know what? In your life, you can trump the cards you were dealt in your connections by choosing healthy relationships, by choosing to limit negative relationships in your life. You, you can choose to build parameters that protect you from the connections that want to be hurtful and want to be harmful. You can choose to overcome that by learning some skills about daring to trust and daring to love, to have a real deep connection. You can choose to deepen meaningful relationships in your life so that you can have fulfilling friendships, so that you can have fulfilling relationships and connections. You can choose to be a part of a church family that loves you and supports you and encourages you. You don't have to live isolated and alone and separated from connections. You can choose something better. You have the power of choice where it comes to that. You know, your circumstances, you cannot change your past. You cannot change what happened to you, but you can choose, this is a hard one, to forgive. You can choose to forgive so that the, the power of that is broken in your life so that what happened 10 years ago doesn't affect you today, that it doesn't affect you 10 years from now. Someone get excited about that. You can choose to forgive. You can choose to not allow that circumstance or that situation to ruin you the rest of your life. You can choose that today, the power of that's broken. Today, my life starts in a new direction. You can choose that your past doesn't determine your future. You can choose that God's taken care of that and wiped it away. You can choose that. You know, about your consciousness and the way you think and the way you feel about yourself, the self-awareness that you have. Scripture tells us that we have to choose to take every thought captive. Scripture tells us that we have to choose to think about the good things, the pure things, the honest things, things that are praiseworthy in life. That we can choose to guard our hearts, to guard our awareness of ourselves, that we can choose how we think. In fact, the Bible tells us as believers not to remove our mind, but to Renew our mind 
Too many Christians remove their mind. The Bible didn't say that. The Bible says to renew your mind. You know, you can change your mind. You can change your thought pattern. You can change the way you feel about things. You've got this wild card that you can choose to think differently, that you can choose to believe differently about yourself. You know, in fact, where it comes to your consciousness, Proverbs 4, 23 tells us to do this. It says to guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. It's a choice that you can make. What I'm going to think about, what I'm going to give my attention to, I can choose. Listen to what it says in Joshua 24:15. It says, "Then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve." Deuteronomy 30:19 says, "I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life. You've been dealt a hand in life. Some of it you didn't have any control over. You don't have control over a lot of that, but you can choose how that, those things affect you. You can choose how to respond to those things you can't control. You are response able. You are responsible for your life. You are able to respond to the challenges in life to the hand that you were dealt. And, and this is what we're called to do in life. This is what Jesus has challenged us with, what God expects. Take the hand you were dealt and win with it. Take what you were given and do your best with it. You live your life and you honor God no matter what. And all of us have been dealt different hands. All of us have been dealt different challenges. All of us have different experiences and circumstances in life and chemistry, makeup. And all of us are different and all of us are unique. But God expects each and every one of us to take that hand and to honor him with it, to worship him with it, and to live for him with it, to make a difference in life, in this life with it, and to take the hand and win with it. You know, I, I, I was thinking this, uh, man, uh, T.D. Jakes is awesome. I love T.D. Jakes. I, I wish you could holler like him and high talk, and, and then I need like a, a, a hanky, like wipe sweat. It'd be awesome. But, but I love T.D. Jakes, and, and he said this uh, many years ago. I was listening to one of his leadership messages, and he, he said, never underestimate the power of a good decision. Good. Never underestimate the power of a good decision decision. You know, I was thinking about that because so many testimonies, so many life stories can be really bad. And you tell half of the story, you tell three quarters of the story, you can tell a quarter of it, you tell that first part of the story, no matter how ugly it is, no matter how destructive it is, no matter how horrible it is, no matter how painful it is, you can say, I, I, I used to be angry and mistreat my family. But I decided to change. I, I, I used to be horrible with money, and I used to be wrapped in debt, and I used to be frustrated, and we would fight about it. But I decided to change. I, I used to be addicted to drugs and alcohol, and, and these addictions controlled my life, and I looked in the mirror, and I hated myself. But I decided to change. We can decide to change. And whatever you're facing in life, whatever you've been dealt, you don't have to stick with it. You don't have to live with it. You don't have to cope with it. You can decide to change. God, thank you for this message. Thank you that, God, you have given us this power in life that we can choose life, that we can choose to serve you. And God, the best choice that we can make is to accept Jesus as Savior. That this isn't about some self-help, this isn't about willpower, but this is about submitting to you.
And this is about choosing your way instead of our way. This is about choosing to humble ourselves before you. And when we humble ourselves before you, then you lift us above the challenges. So God, today, I pray that above all, we choose to seek you, that we choose to love you and to worship you. As we're closing, if there's something in your life that God is right now telling you, you got to change something right now. I want you to stand up. Lord, I pray over these people that you're speaking to right now. God, I pray your Holy Spirit and your power is filling their lives. And that as they make this choice and this commitment to change and to honor you in whatever area, whatever aspect or dimension in life they're dealing with, God, they don't do it in their own strength. They don't do it in their own power. But it's by your spirit that you renew them and that you wipe away the old thoughts, you wipe away the old feelings and that, God, you cause them to be victorious through your strength, through your grace, and through your power. So God, today, I call them free. I call them victorious. I call them more than conquerors through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand. You may be seated.